Hello to all you amazing and beautiful people, souls out there, wherever you are. My name is Marina. I'm from Melbourne in Victoria. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't know me and may not have seen a recent uh, post I put out on my Telegram channel that has actually gone viral, I posted a amazing story uh, on the 30th of April in relation to some kidnapped children that were stolen, kidnapped from their mother in February of this year. And thanks to the efforts of a few amazing individuals, myself, the mother, and someone who was also supporting us, published author, some of you may know him, Dick Yardley. Between the three of us, we managed to reunite those girls with their mother and in record time. And I want to read you this message that I received this morning that actually brought tears to my eyes because it's Mother's Day. I'm a mother of two beautiful boys as well as over 60 amazing souls in animal form. And uh, I got this message from the mother of the girls who, um, who were recently reunited saying, wanted to say how much I am grateful and thankful to you, Marina. I'm celebrating my middle daughter's birthday and Mother's Day thanks to a mother of a lion, mother of a lioness, you. I am honored to have been connected with you and many thanks to Source. I love you from all of us. Prayer emojis, love heart emojis and blowing kiss emojis. And on this Mother's Day, and happy Mother's Day to all the mums out there. My son, who is here to my left, Adam, gave me this cup. You got this, Mama. Very fitting for what I'm about to share with you. Unfortunately, I'm not coming to you with an amazing story like the story I came to you with on April the 30th. This story actually dates back to 2016, but I'm gonna start with this, pu this public announcement with where we're at in this now moment in time. So the day after I recorded that uh, message, was celebrating, having some me time, enjoying some Japanese, just having a day to myself. Peaceful day without the, uh, <laughs> that, the drama of, you know, what's happening in the world. But the day after, 1st of May, our family, which consists of myself, my husband, Glenn, our son, Adam, who's 18, our son, Jake, who's 16. Uh, my mother, uh, who's 70 years old, who also lives and has lived on our uh, farm, our beautiful 17 acre paradise in um, southeastern suburbs of Victoria. She's lived with us since uh, 10th of May, 2020, I believe, uh, following a uh, separation, a difficult separation. There was a lot of family violence involved and she needed emergency housing. So thankfully we had a, a building on our property um, that we were renovating to sell. Um, however, plans changed and she uh, purchased that building and put a lot of money into uh, creating, you know, some temporary, not temporary, but temporary until settling matters with a former partner. But now she's decided to stay with us um, and live out her remaining years with her family. I'm her only daughter and her grandkids and son-in-law. Uh, we've also had, uh, we also had a, have a cousin, my first cousin, who's lived with us since we moved into this property. She's our dream home, Par I called it paradise, my sanctuary, up until what's transpired, which is what I'm gonna share with you shortly. Um, so my cousin uh, moved in with us on the day we moved into the property, which was the first day of spring, 1st of September in 2016. And she's been, um, as well as my mother, a residential tenant, um, and has been living there with us since, uh, up until recently, up until the 1st of May. So what transpired, just to give you a bigger picture of what transpired on the 1st of May, our entire family was illegally evicted by intruders, home invaders, trespassers. This all stems back to a matter that goes pre uh, 
it's about five years since this was this matter. Uh, some of you may know we've had dealings with the ANZ Bank, one of the big four banks in, in Australia, specifically their CEO, Shane Elliott, who was back in April of 2019 put on formal written notice in his own individual private capacity that his, two of his agents um, had committed fraud, falsified documents, forged signatures on instruments purporting to be mortgages, um, and pretty much every instrument uh, pertaining to home loan, a home loan over this property, the one we were just recently unlawfully evicted from, among other things. I'll go back in time a little later. I want to stay focused on the present moment because it's important to express the gravity of what's happened. And I'm hoping that by also sharing this message, this may help prevent others from going through uh, a similar ordeal and traumatic experience that we've just all survived and will continue to survive and will continue to thrive but i can no longer remain silent i can no longer disclose the identities and names of the principal offenders given they are well known in the public domain and they are at the top of several corporations that have been involved in this criminal very well organized criminal uh, operation. I've heard it referred to as, and others have shared, it's racketeering. It's one of the words to describe it. So, on May the 1st, I was home alone. My mother drove past and said there are cars outside of the property. And I got out of there and went down the hill on our property. It's a very undulated land try to get onto my, my cousin who lives in a separate dwelling, a, a shipping container home that my, my father um, uh, bought and set up for her on our property. So we actually have three dwellings, the main residence, which we also share with our tenants uh, because there are certain amenities they don't have in their, their, their homes, which are transportable buildings. Um, so yeah, my father set my, my cousin up so that we all had kind of some independent living, but we all uh, share that space along with over 60 amazing, beautiful animals, some of which are still on that property without their loved ones um, and are being trespassed on and also harmed every moment that this continues, these offences continue to occur. So I'm going to cut a long story short and just bring you back to the key issues. What I observed on the property when I came back up the hill under unusual circumstances, police were involved. They were involving themselves in trivial, uh, uh, civil matters, pretending to be there under the guise of an, a, a different agenda. It was, uh, I just can't begin to express this. We do have a lot of video footage, a lot of audio um, that will back up every claim I make. I am not one to make any claims that I cannot back up with material evidence of substance. And we've already had, uh, going back a little bit, the criminal forger who forged signatures, made false witness attestations on documents um, back in 2016 in relation to the property um, uh, that we were living in up until recently. Um, uh, she, she's already been convicted um, by in the magistrate's court in Ringwood and was, I believe it was uh, February of 2020 or 2021. I don't have access at the moment to all my files because my computer... Uh, that has all my files, all my clients' files and other confidential sensitive information was uh, taken along with everything else. So um, she was convicted of fraud. Shane Elliott, the CEO, and many others involved were aware at all relevant times um, of this fact. And the fact that fraud vitiates everything, unravels everything that it touches, doesn't seem to be something that they, are, they either comprehend or I'm not sure, I'm, I, it, it makes no sense to me. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm regressing, I'll, back, I'll, I'll bring you back to the now moment. So what I witness is this. Doors to the, uh, my mother's house was open, I walked in there, had a look, uh, things were removed, I went into the main dwelling, actually apologies, I went into the main dwelling first, that's where our cats are, we've got a couple of cats that have got kittens, uh, one uh, cat, Cleo, she had newborn babies three days prior to this, and this was the most shocking thing I observed. Uh, other than the, the couch was turned upside down, the place looked ransacked. It wasn't like they were trying to remove furniture. It looked like they were looking for something. 
So it went into our bed, master bedroom, which is where the mother and her kittens, as well as a couple of our foster kittens that are pending adoption, um, uh, uh, stay. And the crate the, uh, that the mother of these kittens gave birth to, six newborn kittens, uh, the, the, the front of that, uh, it's like a grate, the, fr uh, the front door of that was pushed up against a wall so she had no access to her food, she had no access to her water, she had no access to litter. And that's probably out of this entire experience one of the most things that has been the most traumatic. That cruelty, that unnecessary, un, un, I don't comprehend who did that, I don't know who did it or what. I found out later when I left the house from my husband that when he did a walkthrough, uh, our safe had been broken into, cash had been stolen. He'd also reported to me that he the, one of the first things he noticed when he went into my mother's dwelling, um, her cash had been broken into, all her, I'm uh, sorry, her safe had been broken into, all her cash had been stolen. So that's all her pension savings as well as some of the um, settlement proceeds from her um, three years of a, a horrific family law uh, separation matter with her ex-husband who was... Uh, yeah, a lot of family violence issues there. Won't go into that, that's separate, but she's gone through a lot. So this intrusion, this invasion, this this illegal conduct, uh, it just, I can't even begin to explain the impact that's had on her. And she was doing really well living on our property because I've been giving her a lot of coaching and mentoring. My background, I've got um, a certification in hy hypnotherapy, NLP practitioner. Uh, so she was doing really, really well, getting on, you know, build, rebuilding her life and then this happened. Um, so yeah, words can't explain the impact that this has had and the trauma this has caused to so many others without a warrant, without notice to any of these residential tenants, allegedly protected by the Residential Tenancies Act, but clearly not so. So I'm going to now, I've got some notes here to keep me on track, stick to the facts. I'm going to bring you, I'm going to read you through some information as well as some correspondence that will help you see the bigger picture. So I avoid the emotions and the hearsay. I'm very much facts and evidence. So I'm going to start here now. So the following individuals in their own individual and private capacities and many more who will not be named in this first public announcement for reasons which will be explained shortly have on many prior occasions been accused of committing the following serious criminal offences since we first became aware in March of 2019 of many forged instruments dating back to our very first dealings with the ANZ Bank in 2013. Shane Elliott, CEO of the ANZ Bank. David Locke, CEO of AFCA, also known as the Australian Financial Complaints Authority. Juan Martinez, former owner and managing partner at HWL Ebsworth Lawyers. I uh, looked online today and uh, noticed that he passed away, uh, died suddenly of a heart attack aged uh, 64 a month ago. So condolences to his family. Simon Crawford, partner, HWL Ebsworth Lawyers. Ivanko, also known as Ivan Christofsky, barrister at HWL Ebsworth Lawyers. Now, the following people at the Department of Justice and Community Safety, trading as business name Supreme Court of Victoria, Matt Hall, acting CEO at the relevant time, the current CEO, Michael Carroll, Rodney Stewart Randall, associate judge. He retired approximately six weeks after our last encounter, one of many. Sam Anderson, Director. Actually, backtrack, I have, I'm missing a heading. These are individuals from the Land uh, Titles Office, known as Land Data, that register that, uh, uh, with where the, the certificates of registration or titles are, are lodged and the rest of it. Yes, uh, here it is actually. Secure Electronic Registries Victoria Proprietary Limited, trading as Land Data, also known as titles, Land Titles Office. So, Sam, uh, Sam Anderson, Director. Clark Butler, Director. Scott Gendra, Gendra, Director. Anna Liebel, Director. Cheryl Bat Batagol, Chairperson. Now we move on to Shane Patton, the Chief Police Commissioner of Victoria Police. Carol Jeffs, the CEO of Cardinia Shire Council. David Dent, Director of 
CPS Mercantile Proprietary Limited. Paul Wagner, CEO of All Main Proprietary Limited. Last but not least, for this public announcement, Fiona Chamberlain, CEO of VCAT, which is also known as the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal, which also falls under the overarching, same overarching entity as the Supreme Court of Victoria, the Department of Justice and Community Safety. So, all of these individuals and many others, by way of notice to agent, is notice to principal. Notice to principal is notice to agent have been on many occasions put on formal written notice that they are accused of committing the following serious crimes. Criminal trespass, also known as aggravated trespass, threatening repeatedly to inflict serious injury to others, obtaining property by deception, obtaining financial advantage by deception, making false statements, falsifying documents, forgery, perjury, conspiring and colluding with others to commit offences, attempting to pervert the course of justice, perverting the course of justice, abuse of public office, impersonating public officials, also referred to as Crown officers, treason, forging Her Majesty's seals and other seals, concealing fraud, aiding and abetting others to commit offences. So on the 1st of May, six individuals, three women, myself, my mother, my cousin, a man, my husband, two boys, our sons, were forcibly and illegally removed, as I mentioned, from their homes and private property by criminal trespassers. Over 60 other occupants, animals, we also, there's fish, not sure of the count, were harmed and continue to be harmed to present date, which is actually, the, for me personally, the greatest issue of concern and has been uh, since the 1st of May to present date. I'm going to read to you now a lawful notice that was sent on the 4th of May of this year, 2024, to David Dent and others. David Dent is the man with boots on the ground that was leading this criminal operation. So, attention to, actually before that, do not ignore this time-sensitive notice. Silence is acquiescence, agreement and dishonour. This is a self-executing contract. Attention to David Dent in your own individual and private capacity as director of CPS Mercantile Proprietary Limited. Notice of intent to sue. I included a prior notice, which I'll read to you. This is what I'm about to reference. This prior notice, dated 8th June 2023, now applies to you and all other offenders. Please be advised, the list of foreshadowed defendants named below has grown significantly and will be updated accordingly at the appropriate time. We strongly recommend you instruct all trespassers to leave if you wish to mitigate attracting further liability in your own individual and private capacity. You have been warned repeatedly, and we repeat again, that your ignorance of the law is no excuse and no defence. Yours honourably, Marina, for and on behalf of many others, the foreshadowed plaintiffs. So, the notice that I referred to pre, uh, that goes back to Thursday, June the 8th, that was sent to... Uh, the land titles office, the names I mentioned before, all of their top executive members and was copied in to all the other corporations other than a few that just recently came onto the scene at that uh, with the latest events. So, uh, the subject field, proven fraud against the Registrar General by the ANZ Bank and its agents in respect to folio, that's just the property lot number, folio number on the certificate of title, so I won't read that out. We refer to the string of email communications below between 9th of January 2020 and 20 March 2020 in respect to the above mentioned matters, the subject field. We note that agents, representatives acting for and on behalf of land data and the Department of Environmental Land, Water and Planning have failed to correct the fraudulent dealings registered on the, uh, on the particular title in question or taken matters of fraud against the registrar seriously by their acts or omissions, several counts, which is self-evident on proven fraud. Uh, sorry, I'll skip that. We afford all individuals named for whom this notice is marked attention to a further and final pre-litigation opportunity to attend to the serious outstanding issues and to send us direct communication via return email urgently by 4 p.m. tomorrow, 9 June 2023, that the necessary and appropriate action uh, that ought to be taken and 
as demand and as stipulated, specifically correcting the registrar by removing all ANZ bank dealings which appear on title and, um, and doing so within seven days of the date of this notice. Just fast tracking a bit to get to where we are now and the, per the, the purpose of this um, public announcement. A further failure to take necessary and appropriate action in a timely manner will activate the basis upon which you, your entities, persons and individuals may be joined as defendants in a likely high court proceeding, trial by jury, along with many other concurrent wrongdoers, co-conspirators, accessories, after the fact, who have, including but not limited to, by their acts and, or omissions, concealed serious offences, perverted the course of justice, and a few of the other crimes I set out previously. So I'll skip that. Now, 5th of May this year, Further notice, lawful notice and demand for proof of claim. Do not ignore this urgent and time sensitive document. Estoppel conditions may apply upon default. Silence is acquiescence, agreement and dishonour. This is a self-executing con contract. Within the universal maxims of law, equality before the law is paramount and notice to agent is notice to principal and notice to principal is notice to agent. All address parties jointly and severally and applicable to all successors, nominees, and assigns those that they assign things to. Attention again, David Dent, in your own private and individual capacity, acting as director of CPS Mercantile Proprietary Limited. This also went to copy to Paul Samuel Wagner, uh, in your own individual private capacity, acting as director for and on behalf of All Main Proprietary Limited, who is apparently the organisation that uh, engaged David Dent to act for and on behalf of various others. Uh, that have perpetuated these serious crimes. Dear David Dent and all other recipients of this correspondence, notice of default and further final opportunity to cure. We refer to all prior correspondences, including the documents enclosed that were previously shared with you, among other things. You may or not be aware that each and every act of trespass from our last encounter in front of our private property on the morning of 2nd of May 2024, so the day after the unlawful uh, eviction, among other things, the fee for remedy for trespass in the agreed to accepted sum of 2500000 minimum is being charged to each and every trespasser, aider and abetter, and the entity they work for in 30-minute increments, due and payable to every occupant per offence of trespass. We trust that you and all recipients and readers of this notice can appreciate the fact that we could charge you in alternative increments, for example, per second, or per minute of criminal trespass on private property, goods, chattels, and each and all living beings slash occupants. And on the basis that we, uh, and, and on this basis, we believe that the terms are very reasonable indeed, considering during the limited time that some of the occupants were at the property and outside the property, the many criminal trespassers were asked to remove themselves from the private property, among other things, at least 50 times. I, I suspect it was probably double, but I'd rather, you know, underestimate than overestimate. An accurate count, count can, will, can be determined once all video footage captured, captured on five separate mobile phone devices and downloaded to other devices um, can be reviewed. We trust that you are keeping a record of each and every item unlawfully removed, stolen and trespassed upon from all dwellings, outbuildings and grounds, as this will be required for billing purposes and until each... Uh, billing purpose and until each and every item unlawfully obtained is accounted for and returned to the property and everything put back into its former location the trespass on goods chattels etc will continue to attract fees for remedy in accordance with the disclosed terms and conditions subject to change at the occupant's discretion in your case and that's just david dent this equates to a minimum of 240 million per 24 hour period due and payable to each and every legitimate and lawful occupant um, trespassed upon. If in doubt, feel free to ask one of the eight lovely officers who had their body cam footage rolling when the notice of the, of the facts as stated were expressly given to one and all. For any avoidance of doubt, the minimum applies to those who do not commit further offences while trespassing, which is not the case here, as you are well aware. And given the magnitude of your criminal conduct, we also... Uh, and given the magnitude of your criminal conduct. We also repeat our early advice that if any living being, current occupant on the property suffers any harm, sustains an injury, is unaccounted for or dies, the consequences for all involved will be dire and extreme. 
you are also hereby put on formal notice that everything in the large industrial size shed is owned by another entity, not the occupants, not the residential tenants, not the registered proprietors. And should any of those goods be trespassed on, additional foreshadowed plaintiffs, there was currently nine at the time of writing, um, we've got close to 30 now, may join the foreshadowed proceedings against you and all others involved, which we estimate to be 70 offenders. And that's also conservative foreshadow defendants. If you are unaware of the serious implications of obtaining financial advantage and property by deception, theft, trespass, uh, sorry, threats to cause serious inju injury to others, uh, theft, falsification of documents, physical assault, and home invasion, in addition to repeated acts of aggravated trespass, we recommend that you seek independent lawful advice. We repeat that your ignorance of the law is no excuse and no defence, as history has taught us, specifically the Nuremberg trials. And you, and you, along with many others, sorry, and your, along with many others, excuse of, quote, I'm just doing my job is no exception. As for your false and deceptive claim in respect to the cat and her newborn kittens not being deprived of water, food and litter, we trust that the statutory declaration included in the bundle of documents that we now share with you following affecting service on the other two named respondents. This is in relation to a VCAT matter that we brought after the eviction. More on that later. The respondents were Shane Elliott, CEO of ANZ Bank in his own private capacity, and Adam Hale, purported sheriff, acting in, as regional manager for the Sheriff's Department of Victoria. We'll shed some light on this specific subject matter, among others. You, along with many other concurrent wrongdoers, criminal accomplices, co-conspirators, aiders and abettors, will be named in a legal proceeding in due course. But in the interim, we and many others familiar with these matters of significant public interest, um, including a police officer, refer to the statutory declaration sent to you. I want to stop there because I'm not sharing. I'm not going to read you the stat deck uh, that I submitted on behalf of the applicants um, as I act for... as. Um, under my mother's enduring power of attorney, the applicants being the tenants that went to VCAT to seek urgent injunctions, which VCAT had the power to order within a hearing within two days. <laughs> but however, the regional manager, we've discovered, uh, Adam Hale of the Sheriff's Department of Victoria falls under the exact same overarching umbrella as VCAT, Department of Justice Community Safety. I won't go into that, but we, we now know why VCAT did not intervene and why VCAT misled, deceived us and also uh, engaged in criminal offences of their own. Try and protect one of theirs, conceal the fraud, including a warrant, mind you. Warrant of possession. I'm going to, uh, I need to impress upon you the importance of this. We have never seen a warrant. I have been told that there's been warrants out in my name, the kids' names, my mother's name, other names for uh, we're going on about eight months now, okay? Not in, not, not in relation specifically to this matter. So we've afforded anyone who claims that there is a warrant, in fact, there's apparently many, to, to validate their claim because it's the claimant who carries the burden of proof to, to provide the evidence, okay? I think most people know that. Uh, so, so despite numerous and repeated opportunities, written, verbal, Count, so many, too many to count, over about 18 months, never seen a warrant for anything. I now know why. And in fact, I've mentioned to some of my friends and associates who are also familiar with such matters, um, that I'm likely to see a unicorn in the flesh before I see an actual warrant, something that is a duly executed warrant, signed, dated by someone in a court that has official capacity to do it. Well, Simon Crawford, partner, HWL Ebsworth, trying to defend Shane Elliott in the VCAT matter, interfered, third party interloper with no first hand knowledge, sent VCAT some information objecting to Shane Elliott, who he does not represent and never did, being named as a respondent in this proceeding. And he mentioned Adam Hale as well, what he has to do with Adam Hale, I, I don't know. So, he introduced into evidence a document called a warrant of possession. The first time I've seen anything with warrant on it. Unsigned, not dated. 
No cord seal. Fraud. So, more on that later, perhaps, in another segment. I'm gonna, I'm regressing again. I will go back. So, see if there's anything else important in here. Okay, let me just, let me skip all of this. Uh, no, actually, I won't skip all of this. There is a section here that's relevant. One moment, please. If you, I'll, I'll skip some of this. If you like um, his mobile number, this is me going back to David Dent, and I'm referring to he being Shane Elliott, who's had first-hand knowledge of all of this dating back to 2016, as I previously mentioned. I've had a lot of correspondence back and forth via email, as well as text messages. So um, if you'd like his mobile number, let me know. As an ANZ whistleblower, kindly reached out to me and afforded, and, and afforded it up after seeing a YouTube video of an interview with an Irish journalist a few years ago. So I was interviewed by an Irish journalist, Fintan Dunn, who also passed recently. Condolences to his family if you happen to come across this. Um, to share evidence, um, Irish, yeah, Irish journalist a few years ago to share evidence and expose another criminal entity, Betfair, in which our ANZ fraud matter was mentioned briefly. Although naming and shaming isn't my cup of tea, it appears that it is a, ne is a necessary measure. Here's an interest peaking taste of the direction this is heading, which also serves as a warning and caution. Take note that this post, which was a telegram post, from 11.37 p.m. last night, uh, on, on, on one social media platform alone, has already had over 6,200 views and we're just getting started. I've included the Telegram uh, link. Um, I'll actually, I may or may not drop that link um, along with this video. I'll assess that at the time. I've checked this morning, it's had um, th uh, 13 point, over 13.9 K views, so over almost 14,000. Adam Hale, respondent, has also been included in this message for reasons we believe to be self-evident. Self I also um, added in, for further context and clarity of what has been and is being foreshadowed, please see a small selection of videos that are currently unlisted, so not public. Again, I'm not in the business of naming and shaming people. I'll tell you why in a moment. And is only viewable, viewable by recipients of the following links. There were three videos posted. One of David Dent assaulting a minor, our son, 16 years old, after some, um, a police officer uh, accused Jake of being Adam, his brother. Jake was there as a witness, filming what was happening, the, the, the intruders, taking down registration numbers, making sure we captured all them because they were refusing to identify themselves. So while Jake was doing that, he got close to this particular, um, uh, eight, um, I'm not sure what his role was, senior constable, or what he was, his rank. Um, he, it was it, it, within his space, he turned on him and assumed he was Adam and accused him, saying, I've got a warrant for your arrest. I've never seen a warrant for anyone's arrest, but anyway. Um, and then uh, Jake just ran away from him, and I kind of tried to get, break that energy, tell Jake, just stay out of his space, trying to calm everything. Jake ended up running off behind a car. Even the police, there were many police there. No one went after Jake. Firstly, it wasn't Adam that they were alleging they had something for. So as um, Jake ran behind the car, around behind some of the cars and back to where kind of closer to where we were, David Dent, an agent acting for, I don't know, these other companies, for and on behalf of, I guess, ANZ, basically jumped him, threw him to the ground and assaulted him. And it took one officer, nice guy actually, um, to rip David Dent, the bank's agent, off our son. And uh, my husband was there, Glenn, at the time, saying, stop being a hindrance, you know, um, I, I, and, and, and told the officer, I want him charged for assault. Of course, that, that doesn't happen, has it? No. We've got all of that on video and more. At the moment, the li links are unlisted, and um, I will see in the next 24 hours whether I choose to make them open to the public, along with this message on, the, on my YouTube channel, um, as well as elsewhere, because y you can see it with your own eyes then, I guess. So... Now we're up to the trespass notice. Glenn, time please. 34 minutes. 34 minutes, okay. Bear with me guys, uh, getting through, um, you know, over five years of, uh, it's, it's, yeah. So, lawful notice. This is what is affixed to our gate. I'm gonna show you, just so you can see, that is it on our gate. 
It's also fixed to uh, another gate that leads onto our deck to the main dwelling and is also plastered to the glass entry door into the main dwelling. So there's three warnings. Lawful notice, no trespassing, warning, private property. Attention, all men, women, natural persons and entities, including but not limited to government, police, sheriffs, process service, council, RSPCA, private investigators, debt collection agencies. Admittance to this prop private property is strictly by invitation only, three exclamation marks. This is a private close. Breaking the close is expressly and strictly forbidden. Viat violators will be committing the criminal offence of aggravated trespass and will be treated as, in as intruders. Trespass penalty damages apply upon one step onto this private property without express verbal or written invitation consent slash consent. Any violation of this private property notice to land, to person, to chattels, sh chattels which are goods, shall be liable for a minimum penalty of $2,500,000 per person, per trespass, due and payable on demand by each natural person and entity to the entity that they act for and on behalf. Okay? Uh, the rest of it's not, it, it's got, you know, um, five high court precedents set out there about trespass. It's got a few other um, other things, um, and I'll actually post this trespass, I might post this trespass notice on the Telegram channel. Not sure how to use YouTube, I'm not a big fan, but um, I'll, I'll, I may, may link into this at some stage. So, you can read it for yourselves if you want to. So, where are we at now? One moment, I'm just going to get my notes. Okay, 6th of May this year, another lawful notice demand. Same, same, same. Notice agent, notice principal, science acquiescence. This one's attention to David Locke <clears throat> of Africa. Why? Because my, my mother, who is actually also not just a tenant, she is on, ti on our title, uh, a solicitor's registered her a caveable interest under our rental agreement, agreement that predates any of ANZ's fraudulent, uh, the latest fraudulent footprint on the title of 2022, because they, they ended up removing the previous ones and ended up um, committing for, further fraud. We've never signed any mortgage instruments. They've never had originals. Everything's a forgery. Um, so they just make up their own um, and go and lodge another fraudulent footprint on the title. This one in, uh, I believe, was May 2020, April or May 2022. However, not only my cousin, who has priority interest in the property that they claim that they are now a mortgagee in possession of, um, my mother is registered on the title. The, the tenant, who's also meant to be protected by the Residential Tenancies Act, according to these notices sent to... Uh, uh, they, I'll get to those notices later. I'll, I'll just stay with this. So this went to uh, David Lockie, and you'll see why in a moment. Uh, sorry, David Locke. The E is silent. Um, in your own private individual cap capacity, acting as Chief Executive Officer for AFCA, Australian Financial Compu Complaints Authority, and attention, Shane Elliott, CEO, blah, 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 ANZ Bank. We refer to the three AFCA complaints lodged by four individuals on 5th of May 2024 against the ANZ Bank in respect to some of the relevant matters raised in correspondence below dated 5th of May 2024, as well as prior correspondences. They date back to when we first found out about the fraud in 2019. But we've also realised that AFCA are actually, in, it appears, in bed with the banks. We know they're paid by the banks. So I believe they're just an arm and extension of the bank because the minute you bring serious fraud to the table, oh no, suddenly it has no merit or it's vexatious or it's frivolous. Huh, then they shut them down, quick smart. Anyway, it's another story in its own right. So. In accordance with AFCA's published rules and operational guidelines, as set out under the heading 8.7, restrictions on financial firms during a complaint, the financial firm, its agents, representatives, are subject to the following restrictions. 8.7.1, subclause. The financial firm must not seek judgment or take other action to pursue debt recovery legal proceedings that the financial firm began before the complaint submitted, the uh, complainant, in this case complainants for, submitted the complaint to AFCA, other than to the minimum extent necessary to preserve the financial firm's legal rights. 
like to know what legal rights this financial firm has or ever had. The financial firm must not take any action to recover a debt the subject of the complaint, including enforcement of a default judgment, obtaining court, it's another story, uh, protect any assets, securing the debt, assign any rights to recover the debt. Now, where I say debt, it should really say alleged debt because you've got to prove that there's a debt before it can be a debt. And that's never occurred in this case. Um, or list a, a, a default on a complainant's credit file. Well, let's just say the banks and AFCA don't care. They, they allow all this to happen. That's from our previous experience. What, addition, what additional restrictions apply to the financial firm? Whilst AFCA's con considering the complaint, the following are examples of activities that cannot be done while we are considering the complaint. Enforcing a default judgment, again, obtaining court, taking action to seize or otherwise protect assets, securing the debt. Begs the question, why have they cleaned out every single home, the, 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 the tenants' dwellings, all their cash broken into safes, three dwellings cleaned out, outbuildings cleaned out? Mm, interesting, isn't it? Assigning the right to recover the debt, appointing a receiver, agent, or mortgagee in possession, or investigating accountant, immobilizing a vehicle, threatening to do any of the above. Well, they've done all of that and more. So we've pleaded with AFCA to stop this. We put the, we put the complaint in on the Monday, and ANZ and all their agents were on notice of all of this. And it should have stopped there, but no subsequent days where we've had people with eyes on the property gathering evidence we know how many trucks are on which buildings there you know we've got neighbors in the area too so we're in the loop trucks keep coming in and robbing people we have caravans that belong to others we have property that belongs to bunnings on our property we have property to, uh, that belongs to other corporations super gas jj richards um uh, D and D pet foods on our property, as well as many others. We have um, horses on our property under a lease adjustment agreement on our property, and a lot more. So take notice: unless written confirmation via return email is received within thirty minutes of delivery receipt slash receipt of this correspondence confirming that all trespassers have left the property, the terms and conditions re that relate to the trespass charged in thirty minute increments as previously disclosed will apply to all involved we trust the information contained herein is clear and self-evident in its meaning and that all recipients can appreciate the additional reasonable time frame afforded to all involved to cease and desist in engaging in further unlawful unconscionable and harmful conduct to the serious detriment of many others this open correspondence in brackets not private not confidential not confidential, has been written and sent in good faith without malice, vexation or ill will, with all natural, unalienable, inalienable, indefeasible, common law of England and God-given rights and blessings, freedoms and liberties reserved, always and without recourse. Yours honourably, Marina and Glenn of the Jeffrey Family Forum on behalf, one and all. Now I say one and all because you, who are you, everyone who's receiving this message, and those that may never come across this message. This is about all of us. You harm one, you harm all. That is why it's for and on behalf of one of us. And I hope that by sharing this and bringing this into the public domain, which I'd hoped would not become necessary, helps others in some way. So I'm going to now skip um, time, please, Glenn. 44 minutes. 44? Okay, I'm gonna fast track. I'm not going to go over the history of the fraud and all of that. that. I'm going to save that story for another public announcement should it become necessary. I'm now going to go straight into what is about to happen. We've sent a stat de statutory declaration. In fact, that is important because uh, the individuals I mentioned that, uh, well, the, the, the girl that owns two of the horses uh, that, that are just on our property, um, she, they've been uh, there uh, for quite some time. She pays $50 a week for like a full inclusive service with a few exceptions. Um, uh, so where is it? Here it is. She came to the property with her father and her boyfriend, Peter. She 
advised that she's the owner of the horses. Um, her father advised that he is the owner of a caravan. If they bothered to look up the registration plate, they could see it's registered in his name. So there were security guards. They've been had two to four security guards around the clock guarding I don't know what now, considering they've literally taken everything off the property, well, within the buildings, um, from what we understand, um, including trailers belonging to the others, a horse float. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Big operation, but big operation in reverse for them too. So um, one of the security car guards called David Dent, the one with boots on the ground running the show, right? And we're t they were told, unless you can provide proof of ownership, I'd like David to provide proof of ownership, or any proof to support any of his nonsense claims, I'm just doing my job, David, I repeat. It doesn't cut it, okay? Doesn't cut it. But anyway, I'm a very forgiving person. So, back to this. He said they needed to pre provide proof of ownership, so they got proof of ownership. A statutory declaration was sent with proof of ownership, Along, um, uh, among other things. One of the girls is also uh, an owner of two of the newborn kittens, who, um, the ones I mentioned before, that were trapped in. Uh, so we've got a statutory declaration that was sent to David Dent and many others yesterday, that today um, they're, they're going to the property um, and they have access to go to the property at any time to check on the wellbeing, safety of their property the animals, that's the biggest concern, you know, not the caravan. We don't know if his caravan's there, if that's been removed too. We know that they damaged it. They started putting new locks on and a witness saw them drilling into it and that's not our property, but okay. Trespassing on someone else's property, so they've got a course of action now against all those involved, along with many others. So, um, we also got a kitten that's coming. That's why 4.30 today is important. There's another a lady um, who is coming to pick up her kitten. She paid a deposit quite some time ago um, and now we've organised for the facilitation, the exchange. So uh, the owner of the horses um, will be going in, but she won't be the only one. And this brings me to this now moment in time. I, my husband Glenn, the father of our two boys, Adam and Jake, one second. Thanks. You got this, Mama. Thanks, son. <laughs> Just gave me a thumbs up. Got my boy, all my three boys behind the camera sending me positive vibes as I conclude and sign off on this uh, this pu first public announcement. I'm hoping it'll be the last, but um, we'll see. So, Amen. Hmm? Amen. Amen. It's the last. Yes. It'll be in best, everyone's best interest if it were the last because of what will happen moving forward. So, 4.30. We are going in, our family, uh, my mother, Lena, the, the tenant who was unlawfully evicted. Um, she, by, mind you, I want to uh, backtrack, she has no personal belongings. She does not have her wallet. She does not have her handbag. She literally left with her car keys. Thankfully, she's got a car. Uh, the, the clothes on her back, that's it. She's got prescription. She can't actually drive without her prescription glasses because <laughs> she's got a, a strange script. So for the last 12 days, she's been displayed. She's actually living, uh, Universe has a sense of humour, with my father. Now, they are on good terms. They parted on good terms, and my mum has with all her previous, um, you know, relationships. Um, and we're all on good terms as a family, other than the last one, as I mentioned. The, the one who's, uh, yeah, was committing a lot of family violence, but that's okay. Uh, we're we're going to move on from that too. But um, she's now living with my father and has been since this happened. Very strange. Anyway, and so is my, my cousin. He's offered her uh, an apartment. He's got a, a building with a lot of spare space, thankfully. A smart businessman. Um, guess where I got it from. Anyway, um, back to where we are right now. This moment in time is what's going to happen. We are going in. We've got another couple that um, are great friends and associates, and I've got some of their property on my, our property as well, which was in my office, and I believe is now who knows where. Um, they've already said, yep, we're coming. 4.30 today. The address is 205 Pakenham Upper, Victoria, Southeastern Suburbs. We're going. We're letting... Shane Elliott, Adam Hale, first and foremost, and David Dent, first and foremost, know that we're going back in. 
I've got Adam Hale's mobile number, I have David Dent's mobile number, and I have Shane Elliott's mobile number, which is why they are the first ones to be on notice, and furthermore, they're pretty much right up the up there in, in this, right? Um, so I've chosen not to name any of the other agents, but this is a one-time deal, valid for only 24 hours. The reason I'm choosing not to name the others is because I'm also aware that they have friends, family, loved ones, okay? And that if this, if their names go out in the public domain, because their principles, first and foremost, uh, you know, uh, want to leave them exposed and unprotected, well, that's on their principles. I don't want to be naming and shaming them. I have not even mentioned the name of the criminal offender whose signatures, who forged our signatures and was convicted of that and, and more. Why? I know she has a daughter. I want no harm to come to no living being. No living being. So for 24 hours, I will not be naming and shaming everyone involved. And I'm telling you, there's a lot. I, would, I, I think 100 would be conservative now, including the names of individuals purporting to be public officers, servants to we the people, who refuse to disclose their names. They're required to at law sat down with a lovely police officer. He said, we are required to be at law. I said, I know. Seems that many others ignore the law. I believe they're above the law for some reason. I'm, I'm unclear why. And actually this officer, uh, police officer said to me, why have you not gone to a current affair with this? Why? Why I've just explained it to you. I, I believe that there's goodness in everyone. And this is my further and final opportunity to the principal offenders that were named in their own individual capacity in this first disclosure, like I said, I hope it will be the last. It's on your conscience if the names of everyone else involved, including all the documents, your fraudulent warrants, your fraudulent, all your other fraudulent notices and everything else goes out in the public domain. We will package it all up in a very easily shareable form and we the people of the, in the court of public opinion, in the global arena can be your judge and jury based on facts and evidence. I have it all. So, back to now. This now moment in time. We're going back on. 4.30. We are taking possession of our possessions, whatever's left of them. But first and foremost, the animals, the 65 animals, two of which, mind you, kittens, had to, um, I reported to the RSPCA. They were in urgent need of medical attention. I was syringe feeding uh, formula to one of the kittens who wasn't nursing. She was unwell, immune compromised. She had a bit of, a bit of um, a res upper respiratory infection when she was born. And when she wasn't taking the syringe, I had to put tube feed her. I'm trying to actually um, put a tube down her throat and inject by way of syringe um, fluids to make sure she survives. Her and her brother, they're only six week old kittens at the time, um, re also required daily drops for uh, uh, conjunctivitis and it was quite serious. And they were, they were healing, they were recovering. <coughs> so the RSPCA had to come in and remove them and they've been in urgent care at the moment. Now we still have to find out where, where they are and, and get, get them back, reinstate them with their mother and their siblings. But they're well now, thankfully. So I don't know how many other animals are harmed. When I, I'm going to go back. I, when I walked into my home, there's something else important. I didn't, my former home, I don't consider it my home anymore. It's no longer my sanctuary and paradise. And we will not be staying there. That property will be sold very quickly. In fact, we'll be looking elsewhere, buying and moving, and I'll leave the keys with an agent. I've already contacted him. They, they will put the property on the market. Now, A and Z, if, if you think, or if anyone acting for on your behalf believes that our property that's, you know, only, it's probably valued about $2 million now, we bought it for 820000 in 2016. And at the time, when we found out about your fraud, you were alleging we owed 430 odd thousand at the time. Qu quiet, please. Um, thank you. Um, I'm about to finish. Okay, and then you can speak. Uh, so you went and did all of this for what? To gain what? But if, you, if there's something in our property that we don't know about, I don't know, is there a gold mine underneath it that you feel it's so valuable? You know what? Do what others would do. Make us a reasonable offer and you can, we can sell it to you. Anyway, okay, so we're going back on. I'm putting a call out to anyone that's in or around that area that would like to come and support to be there. We'd love to meet other like-minded people. 
Um, we'd love to have you know others that love animals providing you. So this is an invitation providing you love animals. If you don't love animals, sorry, you're not welcome. Um, I think our sixty, the sixty plus animals that have been there without the love and care of their family. Um, and guardians that look after, you know, our whole family looks after them collect together, um, would love to get extra attention. We've got 10 horses, six alpacas, four sheep, uh, lots and lots of cats, lots of beautiful kittens. Um, some dogs, thankfully, they're with us, although they lied to us and said that the, the council came and seized the dogs, took them away, and we found them on uh, in, cooped in a chicken coop. And thankfully, my husband, the boys, broke down some of the... We had to damage our own property, you see, to get our dogs out who were under distress. They are thankfully with us at the moment, um, but not with all the rest of their extended family. So we're reuniting everyone at 4.30. Anyone who'd like to be there for the reunion, please join us. We will po probably only have standing room only, so if you'd like to stay for a while, bring a chair. Uh, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have taken the firewood out of our woodshed, it's really of no value, so we can, you know, light a fire. If you want to, you know, bring some drinks with a coffee, tea. Uh, Jake's just contributed marshmallows. We can we can come together. We will be moving to another state shortly. Um, but if you'd like to come and support us, if you're a neighbour, um, you know, receiving this message, which will be sent to David Dance Mobile, Adam Hales, and. Um, Shane Elliott, so he will be on notice of what's happening. We're giving you hours of notice, all of you, to get any criminal trespasses that may be on our property, off that property. The police have already agreed, we've got their admission, and it's been witnessed by many, that they will not set foot on this property, and they never should, because these were civil matters. What they should have done, but is only, is acted on our instructions, was to remove the criminal trespassers. We invited them on the property for the purpose of removing them. But no, they got on the property for uh, other mean, uh, other uh, uh, alternative means. We'll, we'll get into that maybe in another separate matter against the Victoria Police and those involved in that. But with the banking side of things, this is your final, final, further and final. So you're getting a second further and final. Notice, what must happen and should happen now we're not asking you for permission to come on the, on our property. We're coming. And anyone, as I said, who wants to join us, please do so. We're not. We're going in peacefully uh, and and honourably. And you know, it's, it's, there's not. We're not expecting there to be any resistance. And there really shouldn't be anyone on the property, given we've given you enough notice to cease and desist in the unlawful trespass. So, what needs to happen first and foremost, if those receiving this message and the others that will get it all involved, we will send you the links to the videos. I appreciate it's Mother's Day and it's Sunday. And I don't have your mobile numbers to send it through to you. A few of us will be sending you the message so you're on notice. You have several hours to do the following. To speak to whoever you need to speak to. And within 24 hours of receipt of delivery of this to your mobile phones via text, the link to this public disclosure. To get back to me on my mobile 0414 702 double nine eight i'll repeat zero four one four seven zero two double nine eight and via email info i n f o at puppy p u double p y power p o w e r dot com dot a u so info at puppy power dot com dot a u i would like either you personally one or more of you or someone authorized to act on your behalf that can agree to the following. First and foremost, a cleaning crew that I will engage, come onto the property to, to clean, sterilize any surface that has been touched by the home invaders, the intruders, the trespassers. First and foremost, I want it sterilized from all of this. I just need to know who you'd like the bill to be sent to. That's all. Second, the company, David Dent, and whoever else is involved, agree to reverse this, reverse engineer it, make good. Start trucking everything back and restoring it to its original location, obviously after the place has been cleaned. That's first and foremost. I don't believe anyone of you, alleged offenders, alleged, 
or anyone else that is hearing this would, would could, could say that I'm being unreasonable. Now, how this ends, that's up to you. But there's only two ways this goes. If I don't hear back from you within the 24 hours agreeing that you wish to stop acting in bad faith and uh, wish to, dem you know, actually start through cooperative, peaceful, honourable and equitable means, working with us and cooperating with us because we're not unreasonable individuals, to remedy the serious damage, harm and loss that your actions, inactions and omissions have caused to so many, then it's going straight to the High Court. We will be seeking in urgent injunctions, injunction, freezing orders, among others to affect what I've asked you to do, which is I believe is reasonable. That will then lead to a class action where we will be joining all individuals as well as the corporate entities, I mentioned a few before, we'll be putting them on notice that you trespass on their property because they got a cause of action for every minute, or 30 minute increments now. Um, I, I don't believe anyone wants to go there. Honestly, I don't. Furthermore, we will be naming everyone involved, everyone, and sharing any documents and prior notices that we deem appropriate to hold you fully accountable and liable. Shane Elliott at the Royal Commission, you mentioned words to the effect that you are fully accountable for the misconduct of your, uh, of your agents and the buck stops with you. That's why I came to you first. That's why I came to you and said, I'm aware you are vicariously liable. I gave you numerous opportunities at every single other agent of all the other organizations that I mentioned, the corporate entities before, and the names at the top levels. You're getting this further and final opportunity to avoid what I've foreshadowed. So clean up first, everything comes back. Thank you, you've packed for us because we have decided as a family there's no way we can stay on what used to be our paradise, our sanctuary, our dream home, our dream property. We will be, look, we will be moving. So thank you in a way, blessing in disguise that you have done the packing. However, the first and foremost, my mother's, she deserves peace. She deserves to have her things and be at peace. So we want all her stuff put back to where it came from. And the same with my cousin. As to our dwelling, we can do with the bare minimum basics, just a bed to sleep on and a couple of chairs. We'll, we'll, we'll manage until we move, move on. So, and last but not least, as part of this agreement, should you choose to accept this more than fair and reasonable offer is this, that within 21 days of your acceptance, you've only got 24 hours to accept before we take things further, as mentioned, Within 21 days, the parties work together to negotiate a fair and reasonable settlement on a without prejudice, save us to cost basis. Your lawyers know what that means if you don't. I look forward to hearing from you. I will drop uh, the links below this video um, because I'll be sharing it on Telegram. Uh, 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 YouTube as well as uh, Facebook, which I normally don't use, but I've unlocked my account, said it's a public. Please, guys, what I'm asking all of you, share the, you listeners here that are not involved, um, you could support us wherever you are just by sharing this, sending it far and wide, please. You don't know who you could benefit by doing so. So please help us get this message out far and wide. Uh, I hope it helps someone. Hope it helps a few more. Um, and I'm going to love you and leave you on that, that um, note. Bless you all. Thank you.